presentation about how uh, digital citizenship has manifested itself in a major event. And the major event that we've assigned you is the Boston Marathon bombing that took place just about two years ago. Um, it, it happened in uh, earlier mid-April, uh, two years ago, and uh, the trial of the, the one bomber who, who survived um, just happened last month. So it's really a bookend on this event. And we don't want you to really focus on the the gore or the, the 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 horrible nature of it or whatnot. We're really looking to see how technology changes things. So um, the really the framework that we want you to have looking at this is how is this event different from uh, a public bombing that might have happened 20 years earlier? When there weren't closed circuit cameras all over the place and people didn't have cell phones and were able to instantly tweet and photograph and, and, and send messages and communications all around the world, you know, right in their, the palm of their hand. So what does all this technology do? How does it change people's behavior? Um, and and uh, so you're becoming a kind of researcher an investigator, and uh, we know that you don't intrinsically know all this stuff. So we've, we, we're looking for you to use your research skills. We've given you research projects in the last couple of weeks, and you've shown that you know how to use Google and, and library databases, and we want you to turn to that. So the first phase of this is just examining how all this is impacted. And I'm going to read the key paragraph here in the instructions. I'm sure you've all read the instructions, but uh, you know this is a very tightly packed paragraph, so I just want to um, focus on it for a second. Using methods that you have learned this month, research how the concept of digital citizenship was reflected in the actions of individuals, so single heroes, lone actors, uh, as well as state and local governments, and that includes not only the police, but the first responders. How did they react the going into this tragedy and uh, other things? Uh, it also involves um, other aspects of the government. Um, and so the trial uh, factors into this. And, and they had it on a damn camera everyone the last two years. Uh, so local, state and local uh, governments. You can also make that federal governments because the FBI came in and, and, and took over the investigation very quickly after the events of the Boston Marathon bombing. So here we're being kind of general. You want to talk about what happened that day, sure. You want to talk about the two or three days after that when there was this rush to try to find who did this and there was a, a shootout about two or three days later and the, uh, the two brothers that were involved um, were, were caught. One was killed and, and one was captured. And so the investigation unfolded very quickly and, and uh, pretty much in front of everyone's eyes in this uh, stream of media. And uh, so even though it's a boss, local Boston event, it was really experienced around the world and especially in this country. Uh, detail the digital tools used and how the elements of digital citizenship impacted the historical event. So that's really what we're looking at for, for here. We know what happened. I can tell you what happened. You don't have to repeat it back to me. But we want to know how did digital media affect this? How did modern technology affect this? That's the lens that we want you to focus on this event with. How is it different? And so what is the technology? Um, again, I'm not providing the answer. You can research it. Uh, but it's clear that cell phones had an enormous part to do with it. Uh, there were hundreds of people at the finish line because, you know, the, the end of the Boston Marathon is a, a huge deal anyway. And so when a crime happened there, suddenly there were, you know, hundreds of thousands of people with sophisticated photographic equipment in their hands and everyone was taking their own pictures. So there was an enormous amount of documentation and the um, FBI called for people to send in those photographs. So there was this amazing rec photographic record that they could look at. The, uh, this tightly packed event from uh, thousands of angles and, and, you know, every second of it covered in, in multiple ways. Uh, and plus, uh, it's downtown, so we now have closed-circuit cameras 
in department stores and in front of banks and and uh, street corners and there's uh, cameras focused on light intersections because they want to catch people running through a red light and and that provides photographic evidence and everything so how does the fact that we're a very photographed society or surveilled society impact this event and impact the way people think about it um and also technology. You know, one of the things you're going to find when you're researching this is that these two brothers, the Sarnaya brothers, learned how to make a pressure cooker bomb by watching videos on YouTube. That's the way we all learn things nowadays. Well, uh, we want you to focus in on the positive and negative aspects of tools and technologies. So it's a great thing that we all have access to technology, but maybe some of us aren't really great people. Maybe we learn things that we don't want uh, other people to learn. So, um, you know, we want you to focus in on how things worked out for good or ill. And the individual actors, there were people that stepped in and tried to pull scams or make money, but there were also people who stepped in and who were heroes. So you want to focus in on, on stories of individual action. You want to look at how different organizations reacted. The media is part of this story. So how did the press react? How did the uh, Boston police react? How did the FBI react? How did the uh, EMT people react? So on. So all of these are factors that you can look at. So I've already mentioned a whole lot of stuff, and there's way more. So are you responsible for catching all of this? Absolutely not. You, as the researcher, are going to focus in on what you think is important, and in your presentation, you are going to pick and choose what you want to talk about. Now, uh, the last part of here, you have to have a minimum of four research sources. And, uh, you know, that's for the grade. If you have less than four, it'll affect your score. But for practical, for practical purposes, most of you should think about getting at least six or eight sources because this is the, these are the building blocks from which you will build your presentation. And if you don't have enough stuff, then uh, it's not going to be that easy to get started. And uh, you're going to kind of craft this in the way that you guys did your debate statements. Uh, meaning that uh, unless you live through this and you're an expert, you're really going to use other people's research, other people's ideas, other people's um, uh, write-ups to tell the story. So what we want you to do is do a lot of research and pull parts of it. We don't want you to you know, just lift everything from one article and throw it in your presentation. You're stitching together bits and pieces from different sources. So the more sources you have, the more the ingredients you have to more or less bake your cake. Uh, and so all we're really looking for you to do is start searching. Now, we've sent you to, to customized databases. So you know if you go to the library, you can go to the Associated Press and find all this great photographic material. We are actually encouraging you to use media to tell the story as well as uh, regular sources. But um, if you just want to start with Google, all you have to do is type in Boston Marathon Bombing, and you can see that Google already wants to auto-complete that for me. Now, if I just stop there, this is, again, like I was talking in week one about doing these uh, uh, Digo searches for terms. I'm going to get 16 million hits here that tell me about the Boston bombing. And they're going to be general reports telling me, you know, what happened and how much gunpowder there was and, and what happened at this particular time and juncture. But if you want to start focusing in on specific aspects, you do targeted searches. So here you're going to marry Boston Marathon, and it, again, it helps to spell it correctly. So this time if I spelled it correctly, I actually get another million hits. Uh, it's funny how Google is already correcting for me. But let's say I added the term social media. I'm going to narrow my search down. I'm only going to have 2.2 million hits. But now these articles are, are it themselves looking at what Twitter got wrong during the Boston Marathon. This is, going, this is exactly what we want you to be looking at. So you can be looking at other people talking about this stuff. How did Facebook impact this? How did Instagram impact this? And, uh, you know, you can just do those searches. If I put in Instagram... I have a whole new set of articles that are very specific and targeted. And, uh, you know, if I want to know how uh, 
closed circuit cameras affected this. I just type it in and I have articles about this. So the, these are the ways that you're going to do targeted searches and find a variety of different articles here. And uh, Digo can be very helpful in uh, bookmarking all this stuff, but you don't really want to leave things in Digo. What you're going to do is once you've found articles that you want to use, you want to just start pulling from it. And again, you can pull the media. Here we have a very cool, uh, let me turn that audio off, uh, you know, kind of uh, animated GIF from all these multiple images that people turned in. So you can see that uh, they're being used in various ways, but we have articles here. You can pull pieces, and so you start to build your own presentation. And the way that you organize this stuff material, the way that you talk about it, um, I'm going to show you a bunch of examples from other students, and I want you to notice that they're all different. There is not one way to organize this. Now, because we're focusing on the... Uh, digital citizenship the that article the nine elements of digital citizenship is very helpful you can use the nine elements as a way to organize this material and we'll start to look at that so uh, let me just show you some different presentations I've gotten from people now uh, the last thing I want to mention here is we are restricting how you turn this in you, we don't want you using a desktop tool anymore we want you to use a web enabled tool here so you're going to use either Google Drive and you're going to give us a link to the drive we don't necessarily want you downloading the file just send us to the website so uh, you're going to share the link and then uh, turn that link in and you can also use PowerPoint but you have to use PowerPoint online from the uh, uh, Microsoft one live uh, OneDrive live website so if you're familiar with PowerPoint and you want to stay with PowerPoint, but you haven't used OneDrive, you need to use that this time. So either of those are acceptable choices. There are other online presentation tools that you can use. So if you're interested in those, uh, you need to, to ask me, but I will probably give you permission. But if you're not going to use either one of these two, you need to contact me ahead of time and let me know what you plan to use. So here's some examples from uh, Google Drive. And... Uh, Google Drive always starts out, the very first slide it gives you is a title slide, which helps you to create a title for your presentation. Everything else is in this sort of body copy setup. And the body copy setup has this consistent pattern where it encourages you to make a header for the slide. And that encourages you to organize your slides. You can come up with categories of material that you want to uh, uh, examine. And you can do um, things in a presentation that you can't do in a paper. In a paper, one paragraph might need to flow cleanly next, or logically next to the, to the one after it. In a presentation, you can do what's sort of like a, a jump cut in film. Just by changing the category, the next slide does not have to relate to the slide before it. And you can examine lots of different aspects of the story. And you don't necessarily have to have everything be contiguous. You can just look at different isolated elements. So here, you know, uh, she's looking at the role of technology in the Boston Marathon bombing, and she's combining uh, images that she's got along with sections from articles. So uh, here she's looking at the specific event, positive effects of tools. So she's jumping around a little bit. You know, we get the positive effect of tools, then the negative effect of tools. But each slide is self-contained segment of what they want to look at. And then uh, what I really want at the end is a list of all the sources. So the uh, content sources that you're using, the searches you did in Google to find out about it, I definitely want to see them here. And in media, you're allowed to use any media from anywhere in this presentation. It's an educational presentation, so there are not um, copyright restrictions but we expect you to credit the source. And you can do that on the slide or you can do it at the back with references, either way. But one way or the other, I wanna know where these images came from if you use them. Uh, so here's another one. This one's done with a slightly different uh, point of view. Uh, this woman was in Boston and she lived through it, so she wanted to give more of a personal point of view. 
and she made her presentation sort of feel like a diary, but she wrote it in a particular way. She's still doing what we're asking. She's looking at the impact of Twitter, so she talks about that on a particular slide. She talks about Reddit. Reddit is an online um, uh, social media conversation board. Uh, people talk about lots of different topics, and there were um, special subreddit sub -reddit boards that were created for the Boston bombing, and they were became really uh, central to people talking about it and uh, uh, being involved in the investigation right in the days after it was over. So here she's looking at technology. She's talking about phones and cameras and, 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 and how they provided all this photographic evidence. She's got um, screen captures of actual tweets and so forth. Here the Boston police are announcing that they've captured the guys on their Twitter account. And we have the references at the end. So um, you'll see that not everybody writes all the same amount or has the same number of slides. There's no set rule here. Um, but you don't want to be too um, too tight with the slides. The, the, the slides work better if, if you only have so much material on them and you'll give them a little bit of room to breathe. And they, they definitely work better if you use these headers to organize your material. So here she's doing, uh, or he's doing a left-right um, comparison of positive and negative points. We have the longer argument that he's put over two slides here, uh, and then he adds some media. And uh, you know he's written this kind of like a report. Uh, it it still fits in here, and it's still pretty readable. And when we come in here at the end, we get our references. So um, this person wrote a whole lot, uh, but he also organized it in a way that flowed in a logical fashion. Uh, here's someone else who's just using the headers to, to uh, set this up. So uh, uh, Carice gives me a general statement, and she looks at the positive aspect of everyone sharing the photos. She f focuses in on a hero. Here's a guy who ran in and, and helped uh, save someone who, who lost their leg. Uh, and uh, here's Facebook uh, account showing off one of the, uh, the bombers. She's talking about the positive effects of what the news media did, uh, and then uh, looks at uh, a particular story about um, someone focusing it, or you know, Fo something that Fox News did. I think it was a, a mini series that they created, and then she looks at the um, the negative effects of social media. So things bounce from around, but she's actually covering lots of different material. And she's not covering the same thing everyone else covers. So the choices that you make are kind of your signature. They're telling me what you're interested in and what you think is important or at least intriguing. And again, you don't want to forget the references. And here we have a lot of image references uh, in addition to the uh, text references. Um, there's another presentation. Uh, one of the things you're going to notice with uh, Google Drive is that there's fewer template choices. So a lot of the backgrounds look the same, but we're really not interested in all that flash and chrome. We, we, we care about the content. And uh, so we have a good presentation here. There's not that many uh, sections or categories. She just got the incident and the consequences. So she's sort of dealing with uh, the actual event and then the aftermath. And uh, here we're talking about people getting um, uh, treatment and so forth. So uh, here's another um, piece. And, you know, I've got a zillion of these. There's none of these is, is like the one that I want you to use. I don't really want you to focus in on any particular one as the way to go. But uh, again, uh, this one makes really good use of these headers. So that he creates categories. He follows the nine elements of digital citizenship. So he's got a slide on digital rights and he's got a slide on digital law. And he's really focusing in on this event by using the nine elements. That keeps him grounded into these aspects of the event. And yet he's able to use lots of different material and tell lots of different stories that way. Now, um, this last one is slightly different. This person used one single slide, and it's very dense, but it's actually pretty well laid out and it's pretty logical. It turns into kind of an infographic. So we've got lots of points here. I kind of have to scroll or uh, um, zoom in 
to read the paragraphs because he's tried to fit it all together. But he's really given me what I want, the digital tools and the communication sequence of events, the digital tools used, the positive and the negatives. He's got the sources in here. He's got a timeline. So, you know, this person was thinking in a certain way and wanted to present it all together. And while, you know, uh, it has to scale up and down to be able to be seen, it works. So there's not any single one solution that I'm saying that you all have to, to deal with. That's really what I was trying to get at. But most of you are going to end up uh, using Google Drive and Google Slides. And when you create a new set of Google Slides, you know, the first thing you end up doing is uh, picking a theme. And you'll see that you've probably seen most of these themes already. I'm just going to pick a very simple one right now. And so it drops us into a title page. And in the title page, you can put, you know, a header and a subheader, or uh, you can put the name of the assignment, uh, Boston Marathon Bombing. And I'm just going to add my name here. You have a lot of choice in how you want to make these uh, title slides. I'm not trying to present you in any one way. And again, you've all, we've also seen that some people use one or two sl title slides. So you might have one slide for your name and the name of the, the uh, assignment, another slide for the uh, actual uh, content part, portion of it. So you could name this uh, digital citizenship presentation in your name and student ID number. And then you could have another title slide you, if you wanted to talk about uh, the name of the, the event and so forth. But when you keep adding slides, after you've had a first slide, the next slides are usually all body slides. And the way a body slide works is it gives you one large area for, for text content and it gives you a header area for uh, creating um, um, headers or, or chapter stops or categories like that. So one thing you could do is just start organizing your piece before you even got started. I could come in and, uh, you know, duplicate slides and, uh, you know, just look at different aspects. So I could actually organize this before I even found any content. But one of the things I wanted to show you was, uh, you know, instead of just coming in here and typing directly, I can use this as a space to display imagery. And the way that you insert images and video into Google Slides, they've got requesters here. And the requesters are really interesting because while you can drag and drop on them and you can select URLs, and if you have lots of different articles linked in as um, uh, tabs open, like if you are already on CBS News or uh, uh, CNN or something like that, you could actually just right click on a photo and get the URL and put it in here directly. You wouldn't even have to, to download it and load it back up or whatnot. So you can link directly through to other images. But you, you also have Google search, Google image search built directly into, um, let's see, where does this go? Uh, built directly into the, um, the requester. So, I can start looking through Google Slides here, Boston Marathon bombing. I think it's, let's see, why am I, uh, I wanted to do, I was searching Google Drive. I want to do search here. So the last item here is search. I apologize. But if I start putting in the same kind of searches that I was doing on a general Google search, Boston uh, marathon, bombing, Twitter. Uh, it's really doing the same searches, but it's building them in, and I suddenly have access to all of these photos. Now, this is very useful, but it's also uh, a little too seductive because what I want you to do is to credit these images. So let's say that this is a great image that I want that you want to use. You can select it. All right. A blue line is around it. It's got a check mark on it. If I hit select, it's going to go directly into the slide. But 
I don't really want you to credit this just to Google because Google was just the search engine. That's not where the photo came from. And you can see where the photo came from. The credit is down here, Flickr.com. That's all you need to really put. Uh, so uh, you want to try to keep track of this stuff. If you want to do it one at a time, I can select this photo, insert it into my slide directly. And once it comes in, I have the ability to um, resize it, reposition it, so forth. And if I want to create a credit, I can just insert a little text box. Type, Come here and type uh, Flickr.com. That's enough of a credit. That's all we really need. Uh, now, if you want your credit to be you know, a little more subtle, you can just use type control. And, uh, you know, you don't even have to be fully gr black or gray here. You can make a little uh, small link out of the way. But you can just build this as you go. So you can do searches within the um, slide program. It's better if you do all your research and you kind of organize all your pieces and, and do your thinking ahead of time. But you can actually do a combination of those. But uh, in addition to being able to import text and import images, there is a video import panel well, as well. And again, in addition to linking out to video, it does a search directly of uh, YouTube, which Google owns. And so just the same way that you were searching through Google Images, you're searching through YouTube now for video that you can load directly in. And in this case, if you uh, pick something from YouTube, crediting it to YouTube is sufficient. Uh, you don't have to do a finer credit than that. Uh, but these videos will play in line. Um, it's not going to play right now because I'm still in edit mode. But if I put this into present mode, then these uh, you'd get uh, the controller and it would play very smoothly. So uh, Google spent a lot of time integrating YouTube into um, this system. So if you find video that you want to use, you can feel free to put that in there. But again, what I'm looking for is for you to organize this along thematic lines, tell me stories, point out bits of information or uh, facts and things that you're pulling from your research, and create the story that you want to tell. Um, and you don't have to feel like you uh, cover everything, but I want you to cover more than one or two points. So if you feel like uh, in, in going back to these instructions, you know, we say actions of individuals and state and local governments and uh, technology and, and so on and so forth, positive and negative. If you've got four or five of those different aspects, you know, then you're being brought in. If you've got six or ten of those aspects, then you certainly have uh, a really compelling report. If you're only focusing in on one or two of those aspects, then that is a little too narrowly focused. So uh, I don't really want to try to give you a number of slides that you should have or, or anything like that, but, but I really would say that you, you should have more than four sources just to have enough material to pick and choose from. Because, you know, uh, as you look for sources, you may not find something in the first source that you like. So just because you found the source doesn't mean that it creates material that you want to put in your presentation. Having more sources gives you more choice. So uh, that's pretty much uh, as far as I want to go on that. Um, anybody that wants me to look at your piece in progress, all you need to do is send me a message and include me in the URL. So just send me a quick message here and uh, put the link in. Uh, and again, you know now that when you're creating these things, you've got to go in and you've got to set the sharing so that people can see it. So don't make that mistake and forget about the sharing. But uh, I can give you pointers before you turn it in if you like and tell you if, you know, if I think it's going in the right direction or, you know, this is um, you know, enough or too much or whatnot. Um, and someone's asked about Microsoft PowerPoint. And again, uh, I'm happy for you to use PowerPoint, but it needs to be from OneDrive. 
And um, there's a quick workaround for those of you that are experts at your, your desktop software and you haven't used this, uh, the online version, all that much, assuming mine loads. I think I'm having some bandwidth problems here. Um, but that is that if you make an offline file, if you make a desktop file, you can import it into uh, OneDrive. But I do not want anybody handing in a PPT file. I want you to link me to your OneDrive file. So you can import here. Uh, you know, in uploading, you can upload a, a PPT file, and it will convert it into an online file. Once you've done that, you're going to have to come in and set the permissions as well. So, uh, you know, here's a, here's a PowerPoint file. And uh, one of the advantages of PowerPoint is it has uh, a richer selection of templates. It also has um, some animations and, 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 and uh, different slide effects. But you're still going to have to share it out because they start out private. But... Uh, Here's a, a different presentation that someone did in uh, PowerPoint. So um, this is much richer. It has a lot more options and effects. If you're familiar with PowerPoint, I highly recommend it. It's a terrific thing. If you're not familiar with making presentations, this may be too many options. The, uh, the thing about PowerPoint is it's incredibly powerful. That means that it takes a little while to learn all those options. And you don't want to be... Uh, creating the presentation and learning PowerPoint at the same time. But if you already know PowerPoint, highly recommend that you uh, uh, can take advantage of the OneDrive option. Uh, anybody have any questions? I never know if I've run through this too fast or I've talked it to death. Usually it's the latter. I, I just love to talk. Yeah, when does it do? So um, if, anybody, if anybody has any questions, um, here, again, I'll be available. Uh, all you need to do is uh, send me an email or a message, and I've recorded this, and I will have it posted uh, later tonight, uh, probably on the 3.1 assignment page. So if you need to, you can refer back to this. All right. Thanks, guys.